Okay, very nice. Um, <laughs> uh, big trades. You know, I, I, it's not a matter of finding the big trades. Finding the big trades easy. I think execution sometimes is the hard thing, right? Uh, please take a moment to read this risk disclosure because uh, trading does involve risk of loss. All right. So let's first. Uh, I always like this this intro to these webinars. This is part two, a little pickup from last. Uh, session last session talked about a couple indicators that we've uh, used. One we created, uh, which or several we created, which all can be found on Thinkorswim's platform, and we shared with you uh, where you can find some instructional free videos on the website at PersonsPlanet.com. The Persons Market Catcher, a relative strength indicator, uh, PPS buy and sell or bullish and bearish momentum indicator, and of course, the, probably one of the most popular one of all is Persons Pivots. Apart from that, though, there's other things that we can utilize. And, and again, um, when we're trading, there's a lot of things that can interfere with our, our trading successes. Number one, uh, you know, think about this. Markets start to move, and we want in, but we miss the bid, and the market takes off without us. You know, we're placing limit orders, and, and the market hits your bid, hits your bid, and takes off without you. Well, sometimes market orders have to be uh, used in those conditions. Or probably what we have not seen in a long time. But let's say markets are boring, because that's what the market does best. It tries to either scare us out or bore us to death. And lately, what we've been seeing is what we call affectionately a term that uh, has been around as long as I've been trading, pump and dump, where the markets uh, break out, they go down, they hit tag and bag, everyone stops, and then they take off without you. Or what we have been seeing, and there's been a lot of that going on uh, in this environment, Markets are flat for hours, and then the minute we walk away from a trade that we've been waiting for, it triggers, and you're not in. Now, there's a really uh, great setup that I've been teaching and using, and it's not markets trading above a resistance. They've got to close above that resistance for added uh, confirmation that a, a bullish or bearish signal is valid. And, and I think many of you have read my books, and if you look at that one book that was written, gosh, uh, 14 years ago, titled Candlesticks, Pivot Point, Trading Triggers. I came up with this concept and uh, looking at the markets called the last conditional change. And that last conditional change was very, very critical. That book was, it was a very dynamic book. Um, it, it really went into a lot of things that I use to this minute, uh, specifically trading systems, back testing results, and examining trading systems and performances. And, you know, uh, another thing is, looking at best times to trade. Now, best times to trade may be European session. Best times to trade could mean a 15-minute chart. Best times to, could mean alter, uh, al um, altering a time period. So instead of using a 60-minute chart, for example, I want everyone to think of this concept, if we have approximately 390 minutes, 65 minutes, will give you a rounded new hourly kind of bar and breaks down the trading session, which instead of seven and a half hours, you break that into uh, six bars. That equals out. So we'll, we'll give a little bit of insight about that. But I think for most traders, big fr frustrations is that you get a lot of confidence just completely crushed. So you don't like to take on bigger risks or trades that have bigger risks. Another thing that does happen is we get stopped out of a trade, and then our signals say to reverse and sell short, but you don't, and that ends up being a big winner. Or how about this one, which something happened yesterday. We got into a trade. It didn't work out, and then the same setup came later in the afternoon. We took it and, and made money, but if you'd walked away and didn't take that second trade, and I think another thing to learn is this. The current trade you're in, a lot of people do this, and I used to do this too, and I always talk myself through not doing this, is that the current trade is not going to have the expected or the same results as the last trade. You know, if you say, well, the last time I bought, I got stopped out. I'm not going to do that again, right? When we start thinking like that and we start saying, well, look what happened last time when I did that trade in that setup. That's why trading is an art, not a science. But I think overall, uh, what we need to do is kind of come together and look at a few things. How about we get in a trade and we believe it can have substantial profits, and it turns out the trade went for a small winner to a loser. I mean, how many times have we done all our homework that we can possibly do, and we look at a trade and it has a 
great performance. The volume looks great. Everything that's in your, your makeup kit of your checklist of what you want to buy as, a, as far as a trade, and you think it's going to go to uh, 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 maybe a, a, a five or ten point move, and it turns out that it's only got a couple ticks in it, right? Um, our expectations uh, can, can hinder our performance. So this is one of the things that I like to, to do. How amazing, think of it, how amazing would it be if you knew what the average risks and profits were for a specific market? Now, what do I mean by that? If we could go and say, and I'm going to walk you through something, and I'm just going to cut to the chase. We utilized the person's indicator package. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to show you this in Celgene. So some of you, some of you folks get my tweets, right? And I'm going to look at Celgene with you real quick. Now, Celgene, here's my uh, radar screen using TradeStation. There's a lot of information. You'll see a lot of blinking lights on this. But one thing it does is it, it allows me to run up and down the, 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 the hemisphere of stocks, for example. And if I think that a sector is oversold and may start to rise, such as maybe seasonality is coming into play. How do I utilize this feature of the person's indicators successfully? Well, real simple. One of the things that we were looking for is a turnaround in some of the biotech names. And one of the ugliest charts that's ever been put together in the biotech sphere was Celgene. I even tweeted about this about a week ago in Celgene. Now, I want you to see something here. This is Celgene. Hopefully you got Celgene up on your chart. That's Celgene. And you'll notice it's gray. This is the monthly person's pivot support. Gray means it traded through it. So what we were looking at for Celgene was simply this. Here's Celgene on a, uh, we'll take a look at a monthly chart. I mean, this is ugly as ugly can get, right? I mean, that is just ugly. But we're coming near an older area from back in 2014 of support. So plus not only that, but we're near, this is quarterly pivot support, by the way. That's, you see these three dots? That If this is a monthly chart and you have three dots, that means this is quarterly pivot support. So we have strong quarterly support. The month, the, the S1 person's pivot was 79.55 for quarterly support. So we were near quarterly support. Then, you'll notice that this is the monthly pivot. We were near monthly support. We have what we call a confluence of support. More importantly, if you'll notice, this is the person's market catcher. This is the relative strength indicator. And as prices make newer lows, as you can see, the relative strength indicator is making higher lows. That's what we call a bullish convergence situation developing. So when I get a bullish convergence and I look at a market that's at multiple time frame supports that's been in a long-term downtrend and yet a lot of biotech names do bounce out of here what I'm looking at doing is coming up with an idea of a turnaround in the market so last week one of the functions that we did and announced to people was to start to examine the market and say hey let's look for maybe a short-term turnaround in cell gene it's due for a bounce and uh, let's wait for a buy signal. So here is Celgene. And uh, as you can see, we were looking at this. This is uh, the 60-minute charts on Celgene. And you can see this is where it just was uglier than the Dickens. Many of you might recognize this little pattern here, which is the blue candle is a doji. And the orange candle signifies that there is a John Person signature proprietary high close doji pattern buy signal. So here's the, here's the question. We are looking at the market to go up. We see it's oversold. But here's the question, and this is what it has to do with this uh, chart slide, which is simply, and I'll turn that on and get back to our current slide. Or try to. What are the average risks and profit targets for a market? That's, that's the subject matter. How would we determine that? So you're excited. I'm excited. This is oversold. It's due for a bounce. Well, let me tell you what we did. We ran an optimization. And what we did is after finding out, I'm going to go over here, and I'm going to 
because I've got this teed up for us, and I wanted to share this information with you. This is cell gene, same chart, same bat channel, just a different situation. What we did is we applied this product that we put together called the Person Algo Optimizer. Now, this is the newest version that we have, release number 16. And what we wanted to find out is if the market's going to bounce, what has it done? And then because this is a 60-minute chart, we wanted to find out what's the average rate of return in the last two years when the market's had bounces. So before we go any further, I want you to, to say, if I could get testifiably, I'm looking for the market to rally. I'm thinking in my head, gee, it, it's trading near 75 bucks. This thing could get right back up to $95. I mean, it could easily in the short term rally back up to $85. I mean, we could easily get back to where we once were, which $85 is, if it wanted to rally, it wouldn't be that bad, right? I mean, that's, a, that's not a bad idea to look for the market. It broke a downtrend. We could easily see it rally right back. So that's the, that's the thought that's on the table. So here's the, here's the uh, idea. In the last two years, what has Celgene done? And that's the question, and that's why we went back and looked at a two-year study. In the last two years, so for 2018, 2017, 2016, what has Celgene done in the last two years? It's gone down, it's gone up, it's gone down, it's gone up, it's gone down, it's gone up, down, up, down, kind of up sideways, down, up a little bit, down. So it's done sideways, it's done down, it's done sideways, it's done down, it's done up, it's done up. So in the last two years, I'm sure you may, in this kind of slice of time, say, you know what? That markets had all kinds of different market conditions, up, down, and sideways in the last two years. So the question now becomes, what can I expect out of a trade? And here's the, the key, and this is what I want to share with you. Is it possible, and, and if it is possible, what are the results of running a back test to find out what's the average profit when we get a 60-minute buy signal in the last two years? So if we go to format strategy, I'm going to just turn it on, and I'm going to I'm going to just close, and I'm going to show you the results. And this is the results. The best profit on any of our buy signals, the best profit out of, um, a, and I just went with running a test on long trades on a 60-minute basis. What are the long trades we studied for? We went with high close doji, and we went with PPS buy signals. That's what we did, PPS buy signals and high close dojis. And I wanted to find out, what is the average profit? What's the best profit? And you know what we came up to the conclusion? Using a account size of, and you can figure this is $100,000, notional value, $100,000. You get your performance summary. You know what the greatest profit was? How lame is this? $280, $280, $2.80. So we can reduce our expectations of finding out that, hey, oh, by the way, I'm all excited about looking for Celgene to pop hard off of this move. And we find out that our average profit is about $280 on a $100,000 account. It's high probability, but it didn't give a great profit. So again, if we can kind of visualize, we can anticipate, and we can maybe trade with a little bit more information in front of us. By the way, here is actually the results of trying to look for that high close doji entry. Uh, and here's the, the actual profit target. And here's a, uh, in fact, a max bar exit strategy. So you could see that every time it's given a high close doji, the average profit, it gives back a lot of profits or it just doesn't perform well. So Celgene did, in this last example of bouncing off its monthly support, it did what it historically has done over the last two years. It provided everyone a profit, but a small profit at that. I wanted to share how important, because this is a very intricate part of trading, is to get our expectations of our uh, profits under control. Sometimes we think we got the biggest kahuna trade in our life, and it turns out, and I thought personally, even myself, that I thought Celgene would give a lot more. When we ran that back test study and we told everyone in our trading room, I said, hey gang, uh, I know I've been talking about waiting, 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 stalking Celgene for an upside, but I got disappointing news. The average profit on this is like less than $3. Um, so if you do get a buy signal and you want to get in, um, you know, here's your average profit. And as you can see, that was about the most that the trade gave in Celgene. 
so that's kind of, I think, one of the ways that we can look at, at trading markets. In examining other markets, I wanted to, one of the trades that we did actually today, which was a, a phenomenal upside move recovery in the euro currency, was we were looking at building a strategy, and, and we had a great setup for an upside move in the euro currency. And if you didn't see, today had one of the strongest up days it's had in, like all year, uh, or close to it. But what I wanted to do was examine and walk through you an optimization on the euro currency and share with you what, what best time of the day is, as well as how we would find out what the best profit potential in a market is. So with that said, I'm going to share with you a, a function that we built in. This is the euro currency. Here is a, uh, we don't have any real time frames uh, put in just to share with you. This goes back since the, uh, just the last two weeks. It's not a big deal. But what I wanted to just uh, find out and, and, and walk through with you guys is as you can see, it's in the last two weeks with its normal settings, has only got 11 trades. This is this is there's no system here. This is just we haven't finalized any of the settings. I wanted to walk through the settings with you real quick, so I'm going to go over here to Format Strategy, and I'm going to show you what's really neat. What's the best time to trade? So we have built in a function to find out what's the best time to trade. Well, define what best is. Is it the best? Uh, risk reward ratio is at the best of course the keyword profit the, the highest the, the best gain and that would be what we're all after money the best gain so start time this is 1230 I'm going to start at 1 in the morning and uh, what's this ends at 1700 so you all know that's 5 p.m. so end times 5 p.m. but do we want to trade this all night long what's the best time for the greatest profit in the marketplace that we could use. And that's what we want, want to really find out, right? So we're going we're gonna to do something. And I'm going to optimize this just to share with you how things work. Um, how many minutes? We're going to add minutes. If there's 60 minutes to an hour, how many hours is 480 minutes? All right? How many do we have? If you got 60 minutes in an hour, we're adding, what, like six hours. And I'm going to do increments of, what, 15 minutes. So I'm going to have this system optimized to find me when is the best time to start trading uh, over the last, say, two weeks. We can go back and change this to the beginning of the year. Uh, this, again, is a, a futures contract. So remember, there's rollover considerations. But I'm going to just hit, and I'm going to run this uh, back test and just say, OK, find me the best time to trade. So first, we're going to run a start time. And we're going to start. And all of a sudden, we've got a start time. And we got a different performance situation. This thing is now, as you can see, it's done a couple things. It's got a short position, which got out a little too soon. And our buy position, which got out. It's got a sell signal. It's got a sell signal. It took a long and got stopped out with a marginal loss. It went long, took a nice profit. It went short, got out. It went long and got out. And this was the move that we were talking about today. This move happened overnight. It had a pullback on an intraday basis. And this was the breakout continuation pattern that, that took place today that we were talking about and did in our trading room. So what I wanted to point out, now this is only two weeks, but here's the, here's the funny thing. Let's go and look what the computer found for us, the best start time. It found out, and we're going to, if I may, I'm going to cancel this. I'm going to hit OK. And I'm going to go up here and look at the optimization report. And basically, what it found out was the best time was adding 15 minutes to 1 o'clock was the best profitable trading system. It also found out for us that the best profit in the last two weeks, we went from 100 bucks to $10,712 trading just two lots in the market. This is what it found, adding 15 minutes. So the start time was more profitable over the last two weeks, trading right before the 3 AM and ending before 1700 cutoff 5 PM Globex. So uh, central time, so you know, Globex uh, closes at six uh, Eastern, five um, Central. So, excuse me, I got that five Eastern, 
uh, for Central. So here's the story, gang. If we take a look at this, we would also find out that how many of the trades were profitable? 68% of the trades are profitable. Now, if I want to have a less robust, I could take a look at this optimization and say, well, why don't we add time, add more time? What if I only want to trade at, um, let's say, 345 minutes, uh, 360 minutes. If we add three, 360 minutes is six hours, so that would be starting trade at 7 a.m. It is profitable, but it's about half as profitable. And then what we found out, it's still a decent system to start trading at 7 a.m., but you're not going to get as much profit. So that's the, that's the difference, but it just tells you what's your best time to trade. Can you get more profit at trading at this time than you can at that time? Those are the test results that you'll find out of how to trade something you know, in, in the marketplace. And then you can help develop when the best time to trade is. And that, I think, is very important. Here's another function, as I was mentioning about how many contracts uh, we were starting with the format strategy building in a position sizing function. If we're trading stocks, we can have position calculated method number one, which gives us our position value. So if I'm going to have a $10,000 or $100,000 that I want to trade, then I want you to automatically calculate how many contracts to get me in that $100,000 can use. We're using on a position calc method number three is the one we should be using, which is position size and using two lots. So if we use that function in the marketplace, here's our, our net results. Now, let's do one thing. If we're trading two lots in the market, we're trading two lots, is it more profitable to get out of half your position on an average profit target? Or is it better to get out of everything? Get out of half or get out of everything? That's a good question, right? What would you think the scale out would be? Well, we can optimize to find out, should we get out of nothing, or should we get out of everything, or should we get out of half our position? If we're in two contracts, you can't get out of a third. You can only get out of a half, either all, none, or half, right? All, none, or half. And so we're going to optimize this, and we're going to hit OK, and we're going to find out in a 15-minute setting trading euro currency, is it best to get out of everything all at once or trail stops? And so we go over and we're going to look at our optimization. And kind of funny, it literally definitely tells you if you got out of half, literally, if you take a look at this, 70, almost 76% of your trades are profitable. But you don't have as much profitable. So you're giving up and you're trading more. Look at this, 54 trades. So it's a factor of what you and your risk tolerance and what your rate of returns are for a trading system to define what's best, getting out of everything or trailing the stop. So if sometimes it says get out of everything is the best, don't scale out, just get out of the profit target. When you come up to a situation like this, which gives a dynamic short position and it gives you your profit target, don't complain if the thing keeps going down because on average, when it gives a profit target like here, it's generally the end of the move. It gives a profit target, things chop around for a while. It gets a profit target, and guess what? It's the end of the, the run. It gives a profit target, and it's almost the end of the run. So if we examine these trades, that's where we can kind of break things down. Now, I'm going uh, to take an example and look at something that's unique and examine some of these trades. Like, for example, let's look at this last trade right in here where it went long today. It bought two contracts. It says buy two, and it took the profit. So let's take a look at this and apply the test to the chart. So by doing that, we've now changed the entire system because it went from getting out of everything to getting out of half. So by getting doing that, what we've done is, you can see here it gets long a nice trade. It gets out of half the, the, the position at the intended target, and it does trail the stop. And it, you know, it's OK, you can see. $6,000 by getting out of everything all at once, or lower profit, $5,100. Remember, looking at this back test result, you did more trades, but your accuracy improved greatly. You're 75%, 76, 75.93, excuse me. Um, uh, 41 out of 54 trades were winners. 
and you made money over the last two weeks trading two lots. Not bad in this market environment. And we found out what the best time to trade is. Obviously, this is a there's no trades here because it's it doesn't turn on. We optimized it to say what's the best time to trade. Look at this. It tests we optimize what's the best time to trade. And and fortunately, it, it got us in and would get you into a trade and get you out darn close to where the low is. And then it, it, it does stall for a while. So by optimizing and taking a look at the market, and this is what's dynamic about this gang, is look at the market conditions. Down, sideways, down, up, down, sideways, up, down, back up. I mean, you've got everything in here. This is not one straight uptrend. It's just a, it's a down, it's a base, and it's an up, right? So you got everything going for you here in this just small sample of time. What I'm just sharing with you is how optimizations and functions work and what we built in to give our clients uh, a better edge in the market. So this, this will give you an idea whether or not you should be, should I hold, should I trail, should I scale out? You know, and that, that I think is a really neat function. If you get out of, uh, if you take a look and we we'll look at the signals and apply this last test here to the market where we have three functions. Zero, one, and a half. Zero, get me out of um, trail the stops. Don't get me out at the profit target. Just use the trailing stop function. And you can see it's less profitable, but less trades. And as you can see, it does have a pretty decent rate of return, but it filters out. You do a lot less trading, gang. 39 trades. So it's a higher filtered mechanism with less trades, less trading costs, and less time in the market. If you're less trades, that means you're less time in the market. So it's selectively choosing some of the better trades. I mean, if you could, you, you notice here, this thing took a lot bigger profit, number one, than uh, the number, uh, the, the getting trailing stop function uh, gave you a better profit than your applied test here than your average profit. See the difference? Wow. So, you know, it's, it's kind of like it gives you a chance to get a better understanding of the market itself when you can optimize things and say, gee, do I want to, you know the old adage, get in and then let your winners ride? Do you let your winners ride? Is that really true? Do you let your winners ride? Do you trail a stop function? Or do you just simply get out when the average profit is hit? See? That's what the kind of the neat thing here that we are capable of doing what we created that provides clients to get the best return or the best efficiency rate of return for their equity. How amazing is that, right? I mean, it's, it's just absolutely beautiful. It is so awesome. This is kind of how we build a strategy in the Euro FX and also another thing that helped us to determine a, a good, strong setup in the market. So I like to say, can you put the odds on your side? And yes, I think you can absolutely put the odds in your favor. You can, if you use this, and people have been saying, John, how does this algo optimizer thing work? Is it, it's not an ATM cash machine, first and foremost. Now, we've done a lot of YouTube videos, and I want everyone to kind of get a feel for, you know, what's out there. There isn't a single hedge fund. And this might, if you're in New York City or if you're in Chicago, you know, if you belong to a private country club, usually the private country clubs are not Monday through Fridays over full at the golf course in the summertime, right? I mean, if everyone had an automatic trading system, they would let it run and they'd be on the golf course, right? But they're not. That's why you can get a tee-off time generally Monday through Friday on a golf course, you know, at either a, a, a semi-private or a private club. Why? Because most traders are watching the machines, and so they're not just letting things run all the time. But what they are doing is they're getting an expectation based on history and the performance of a market and how you can utilize functions that are set up and built in there to auto-execute trades. So the thing is that we can auto-trade, like for example, in Celgene, with the example that I gave with um, the, the position in Celgene, we, and this was exactly what we were, were talking about doing, is, is simply this. Hey, gang, if you like 
uh, if we're if we're getting ready, you know, here's a free fall. When the market gives a buy signal, you can get a, a generate a, and have it trigger. You want to get long? Great. You're sitting there, then turn it on and say take a buy signal. But at least you're armed with knowing, and it'll execute and get you in. You could also just have it sent as an alert and says this trade populated. Do you want to do this for your account? Well, if you've already, all you have to do is take a quick look and say, hey, I got a high closed doji. I've been stalking the market. The volume's kicking up a little bit. Uh, this is the person volume indicator. I say, yeah, I want to do that trade. Execute it for me. Or if you've already done your work, you just automatically say, yes, take a buy signal. I want you to get me long on that buy signal. I like it. I know what the, you know, as long as the system's working and I don't lose power, then in this case, I just want to turn that on long only. I don't want to take a short. And so therefore, you can program a long or short only system. And if we go to format, you'll notice that's all we were doing. We didn't turn sell signals. It's on zero. It means false. Don't turn on sell signals. We only have buy signals with either a PPS buy or a high closed OG. So you can selectively use uh, whether you want to get long or short in the market. And that's kind of a, a cool thing. And, and while we're on the subject of long and short, there's two markets here that I think are pretty, pretty crazy. This is Apple. This is a daily chart. And I want to share with you a couple things. So whether you're trading Forex or whether you're trading equities, I mean, Apple over the last, we take a look at Apple, and um, I think this particular uh, model, if, you're, if you want to see this a little bit more uh, intensely, uh, this particular model, here's the uh, performance graph on that. I mean, it's fairly smooth. This, again, is a daily chart. The performance summary, if we go periodic returns, uh, this is based off the settings, just to, so that you uh, we're all looking at the same thing. This is on 100,000. Now, this is a model. This isn't actually a live trading, but this is a model to say, hey, are these signals valid, and what do we want to do with Apple, right? So when we take a look at a performance graph, we go, wow, is there a lot of volatility in the peaks to trough? There's not that many peak to trough meltdowns, but there are periods in time uh, that we've, we've seen it need time to recover. I mean, it's not that bad. It's, it's fairly smooth, and it's, uh, I think we would all like something to trade that can generate that type of consistent results. Here's based on a $100,000 account. In 2010, it generated $42,000 in profit. 74% of the trades gang in 2010 were profitable. That's what that means. In 2011, which, remember, there was a correction, it generated $38,000 in profit. Now, let me explain to you what's th this column here. This is based on the return cumulative. And we're just looking at a, it's not reinvesting. It's only trading $100,000 per year, so per trade. So again, do understand this is this percent gain is not accurate in that content. So that's the only the, the, the drawdown of, of looking at this statement. But what you are looking at is 42% return the first year, 38% the second, 31, and then this year uh, in 2013, not so great, only 15% return, 30% return in 14, 19%, and 16 and 17 were pretty bad rates of return for your equity. And then that's followed by 2018, which Apple's already at 19% return. But it has a very strong rate of return. It just was inactive in 16, 17, and it was probably because the market condition in Apple, and if we change this in AAPL, we look at a weekly chart and say, well, what did Apple do in, in those years? And as you take a look, and you go, oh, well, no wonder it didn't really do much. In 2015, Apple actually didn't do anything for the year. In 2016, Apple actually went down most of the year. So you have two years of a stock that actually went down. If you were long the stock, you didn't make any money. And as you get into 2017, it had a better year. And then again, 2018, I mean, it's not done that much, and the system itself, or the, the signals themselves, have done better than the overall market. So since 2010, the system using Apple, just to share with you, has done a better job in, in giving some pretty 
good signals. Now, earlier on a previous slide, I'd said, do you scale out? This, this is generating a buy signal. You can see it here. And it gets out of everything. It did not trail. You don't see a scale out. You don't see double lines. It just hits a profit target, and it gets out. Here it got out because it, it got out of the long from a trailing stop perspective. And thank God for the trailing stop, right? Because this thing went just, it went southbound on you. Here it does get, enter a short position and it gets out, it reverses and goes long. So it got out a little early. But the funny thing is, since it's gotten out, the stock really hasn't done a whole lot of anything, which is kind of cool not to have your money at risk in the marketplace, right? So there's a lot of those. When using a trading system, it's basically going to take trades that you wanted to take, but you can't because either you're not around or, you know, but you want to take high closed dojis. What is a high closed doji? After a downtrend, we get a doji formation and a market closes greater than the doji and there's a few other systematic rules behind it. Here's another one over here and you can scan for those high closed doji. Here's one right there. You can see that it's a, a blue candle followed by the orange. That orange means the market confirmed gave a buy signal and it gets in on the next session. So there's another, I mean, in just believe it or not, since February, two really dynamic trade setups using the high closed doji. Here's another little one right over here, right? Three nice little high closed dojis based on, on this system. So again, utilizing uh, the history and performance of the market, we're able to look at the dynamics of, of the market in, in terms of what is its average profit, and we can at least get a better expectation on what to expect out of the trade, right? Maybe we're looking for this to be the biggest kahuna winner. On average, it's not perfect, but on average, if our profit target is only $12 or $20 in a, in a given period of time, and that's the other key component, I said, in a given period of time. Um, I wanted to share with you, here's something, uh, that was crude oil, excuse me, that's a little simple two-minute two system on crude oil we, we, we trade with, but here's the spiders. Maybe bring this up into, this is kind of a cool uh, model. When the spiders, the S&Ps, look, the other day it's short. Um, it scales out of the position and, and it reversed on the opening this morning. It got out of the trailing uh, function and it reversed and you can see it says buy market. Here's the closed profit. Here's the new uh, Fuchsia's open trade equity. That's what this strategy equity report on the bottom graph means. Um, the function is that the market is now long, right? And it does what we sometimes can't do for ourselves fast enough, or maybe at the very least you're short the market and you're bearish or you didn't get short, you certainly don't want to be short now because it's out of its profit. You know, that's another thing that's very dynamic about this is learning that generally speaking, if a market gets out of its trade, right, is it near the end of a run? Is, it, is there a, 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 a turn coming? If a market gets out of its short position that it was holding, um, you know, should we, maybe you didn't get short. But when it gets out of its short, and you're thinking, oh, the world's falling apart, maybe I should go short, this will get you thinking twice and say, well, the system's flat, maybe I shouldn't get short now, maybe I'll just wait. And all of a sudden, it turns around and the system goes long, and that was a dynamic buy signal for traders that, hey, the market's looking great. So in putting things together, gang, the computer world and this computer trading environment, we, we've been able to really accelerate things and, and, and not only that, but define who we are as traders, right? I mean, what, what products do I want to trade? There's so many different things out there. This is uh, the VXX. You know, I've been talking about the VXX for, well, gosh, a long time. I've been giving presentations on this and, you know, one of the things about the VXX and the person algo optimizer, um, let me share this business model with you on the VXX without getting into a whole class on, on volatility in the VXX. Let's take a look at the dynamics of this. So this goes back since 2010. This is a 60 minute chart. It's got a robust amount of sample of trades, let's say 767 trades. That's uh, pretty dynamic, right? 767 trades. The performance graph is not a bad stellar movement. There's, again, a period of what? Inactivity, 
see in the performance, but almost every single year, you look at the periodic returns, and based on a $100,000 account, there's 23% return, 57% return, 84% return. Look at the percent profitable. Except for the first year, every one of them's well over 50%, except for these two years, 46%. But still, a rate of return based on a $100,000 account is absolutely incredible. It's a very dynamic product. And I'd have to point out to everybody that, you know, looking at this particular uh, market with volatility, there are so many different ways of trading in a marketplace. We can utilize um, S&Ps, buy signals in S&Ps, and take volatility signals, or vice versa, which is always my favorite to do, is to say, gee, if the system is in volatility short, you're probably in a long spider. Right? Because if the VXX goes down, that means the market's going up. And if you're short VXX, then you're what? You're looking at a long spider. These are kind of things that we've, we've helped investors and we're putting together and have done utilizing the person's indicators as well as what we've been, what these specific tools have allowed us to do. Get our thinking better so that we do have a fighting chance to beat the institutions. And that's what we wanted to share with you. What indicators are working in this environment? You know, um, two weeks ago, uh, on May 18th, we found an opportunity in a few stocks. Uh, namely, you're going to like this, and, and you may have seen my tweets about Tony the Tiger Kellogg's. Uh, we actually had this high-closed OG pattern. We called and looked for a pullback in this market. We got long, and we finally scaled out of Tony the Tiger. You know, that's a from the entry to today's exit was nearly a 10% move in Kellogg's, Tony the Tiger. And don't bash Tony the Tiger because, again, Kellogg's is a parent company for Pringles. So if you're not on a, a, a if you're on a low-carb diet, I mean, or you travel, uh, Pringles probably not going to be great for you. But, I mean, they're a dynamic potato chip. They're a staple item when traveling is, I guess, my point I'm trying to make. Um, I wanted to explain explore this with you and I wanted to share with you a couple of key critical elements on, on the indicators gang that helps us not only choose high closed OGs if stocks get away from us but we can say is there a chance that the market's going to pull back and to where and that's where looking to buy pullbacks in an ongoing bull market is very helpful. As you can see as the stock rises the person's market catcher the relative strength starts to improve vastly. The on-balance volume, and this is one of the things that I wanted to point out to you, the difference between on-balance volume and my proprietary volume indicator, my volume indicator illustrates bullish convergence. What does that mean, bullish convergence? What it means is that an older price, point number one, say, versus price point number two, the price makes a newer low. Bullish convergence simply states that the indicator you're looking at which under normal condition, like a volume, if this was a very, very bearish market and heavy selling, then we would see heavier volume change. And if not, it shows that, as in this case, that the low was put in on very weak volume. It shows that the market is vulnerable for big price increases, and that's where we selected Kellogg's. I wish every single trade I did was as dynamic as Kellogg's. Um, and I do want to share with you uh, another scenario which had the same makeup, and I want to point something out. This is the strangest thing, and, and the markets continue. As a student of the market, friends, I've been trading since I first started in this business in 1980. And so for some of you know that I started off with a guy by the name of George Lane who created the indicator known as stochastics. I've been in front of technical analysis and cutting edge technical tools since the minute I got into this industry. That's 38 years. And what I've noticed is there's certain things that have changed. Like, for example, volume studies have changed. So on balance volume, which I helped popularize back in 2008 and 9 and 10, um, things dynamically changed with that indicator the way we look at it. So I created this indicator, which has taken off percent changes of volume. Clearly, the same situation is developing as you just saw. This is a different chart. This is lows. And this is the relative strength indicator. And you can clearly see that price point number one versus price number two. Price point number two is sharply lower than price point number one. 
the corresponding indicator is a higher low. So the relative strength versus the overall market was forming a bullish convergence. And the volume indicator in terms of percent, this is the John Person volume indicator, also showed bullish convergence. But it didn't reflect that in the on-balance volume. It made a newer low. So not as reliable. That's my point I'm trying to make. So where's the surprise? Well, we got long lows. And uh, it looked great. And I mean, lows had this like uptrend. It pulled back. And then the problem is this red candle right here. Before the market opened, and that's where it opened, they made an announcement on that day right here. They made an announcement that they have a new CEO coming. The problem is the next morning they were going to report earnings. And I said to everyone, we were long the stock. I go, guys, if you can get out, get out right now before, the, it, you know, in the pre-market session, the market's trading at like 90.05. I said, get the hell out of this stock in lows. Get your long, get out of this stock. I have never... That's generally not good. How would a company report that they've got a new CEO the day before earnings? It's like it's either they're trying to soft cushion the bad news, and what happened is the next day they missed the top line and they missed the bottom line, and uh, people didn't give up. This is where it closed that day, and the next day because of the earnings missed so badly, but they said, you know, our guidance is still good, and we got the new CEO that we announced yesterday, and then the stock went up. This is the most bizarre situation. Why they didn't say on earnings call, by the way, we got a new CEO. So Lowe's, we did pick it out right. Maybe we could have done a better job trading it, but, you know, I, I, we made money on the trade. And what it is is that the, the market gave us those technical indicators uh, that were very powerful. I'm just trying to tell you that it's not an easy game. It's not like every trade I make is a winner, and I wish I could make better performance out of every trade. But I have better tools now than I've ever had in my life. I have better tools and a systematic way of execution of those signals and, and those, those trade setups than ever before. And that's what's really exciting that I can share with people, not just my passion, but I can share how we can successfully beat the markets. And that's what the kind of the key thing about the indicators that I've created. By the use of a very strong platform like TradeStation's radar screen, I can find out in real time before it happens that if the market's going to close above or at this, perp uh, this level, it's going to generate a buy signal. Now, what's funny is that I want to share this with you too. Today, I'm going up and down the list, and I'm sharing with people, by the way, we, we, uh, here's some of the positions. We're long uh, at General Mills. We didn't get filled on, uh, we got filled on 50% of the trade, but I know Consumer Staples is not one of the most favorite uh, trades out there, but it's getting ready for a turn. We see a dynamic change in the market, and, and today it formed a little high-closed doji. That's that orange candle. The relative strength's getting better. Stock's been going down. The relative strength from point number one to now the recent low, point number two, the relative strength is higher. So we have relative strength convergence, and the volume has that bullish convergence. So far, I've only given you a few examples. When we get that pattern, it improves the odds that we might get an upside breakout in that particular stock. And that's, the, that's what we're kind of focused in on. So we're kind of excited about that with General Mills. Today, though, a, a stock generated Best Buy, generated a high closed doji. It had earnings. It didn't do well. And I think for tomorrow and the next day, uh, while the volume's not great and the relative strength's uh, what we would say bad, uh, you know, it might need a little bit more time to recover. But, you know, the funny thing about uh, Best Buy, they sell electronics, they sell TVs, and from my own personal knowledge, you know what one of the strongest time periods of uh, sales in flat screen TVs are? It's not really Christmas, Father's Day, which is right around the corner, June 16th. It seems that for the NBA final playoffs and Father's Day, uh, lots of big screen TVs are purchased. So that may, by the way, help out Best Buy's um, uh, performance in the weeks to come. So we probably want to take a look at Best Buy and see if we get improved volume and relative strength. Today, um, as we go through a few lists, I wanted to just share this with you about, you know, how are these tools helping me with better trades? 
in the consumer staples sector, um, what we did find is that uh, besides Kellogg's, which we've taken a nice profit on, um, which I've tweeted that out, uh, which we also had a few other uh, consumer staples like General Mills, but today, in fact, we had a high closed doji formation created in, you're going to like this, Monster Beverage. Let's take a look at, and I can hit this column, and I'm going to hike, I'm going to, it'll, it'll collate all the fresh. If it's blinking, it means it's a brand new buy signal. So we got another new, brand new buy signal. We had one on General Mills over here last week, and so it's up. Hormel, which, I mean, don't knock Hormel. They are like, it had, it's not blinking, it's solid. You can see it's solid because it generated a high closed doji yesterday. Hormel generated on improved, a little bit of relative strength, improved thing. It had a, 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 a high closed doji and, of course, the stock gained. So, I mean, it's not, it's not a home run, but it's not, it's not a loser, right? But here's the, what I wanted to get to was this one right here. This is Monster Beverage. Monster Beverage today did, you can see the orange candle, I'll, I'll, I'll expand this so that you can see this. It doesn't have the absolute best looking uh, convergence pattern with the relative strength, meaning the number one point, number two point here versus the number one point over here, this is absolutely a lower low. Uh, we would want to see that relative strength improve a little bit. Volume shows that, that convergence pattern that seems to be very pre uh, present in, in markets before they pop. But we did get that high closed doji in Monster Beverage. It does have improved relative strength versus the overall market. That's the person market catcher showing that the while it's not breaking out, it's not bright blue, it's gone from bad to getting better. So it's getting, it's improving. It's in an improving condition, and that's positive. So I would say in the next two weeks, on a daily high closed doji, it should give you an idea that the market minimum objective would get right back where it first started from, which is somewhere around the 56, 55, 56 is how I would calibrate Monster Beverage, right? So today we had quite a number of brand new high closed doji uh, on improved relative strength. What's neat about this system and the way we've lined this up, this is the person's market catcher. If it's fuchsia, we know that the market, or I know, it's color-coded, that it's coming from a, a, a lagging condition to an improving condition. Bright red, that's bad. Stay away from it. Now, the funny thing is Costco has earnings, and Costco, not all retailers are doing fabulous in this market. Now, Costco could beat out earnings, but here's... Here's something that I would probably say stay away from, is that when the relative strength, Costco rallied, and it had a buy signal, the trend is up. So the funny thing is, wasn't the stock market down yesterday, right? Costco, its performance was still uh, underperforming the market, even with its value in an uptrend. So Costco's up, stock market went down. Today, the stock market went up, Costco went up, but it's still lagging, it's still looking bad. And look at the volume action here. The volume action is the market made newer highs, and the volume action made newer lows. So this would not be the consideration that I would say I'd want to be a buyer of that stock ahead of earnings, by the way. So it works both ways. Now, Costco, you know, doesn't mean that the, the indicators are going to be right 100% of the time. It just means your odds of success of this thing gapping up and going are probably slim to none. Last session that we did together, I pointed out that the one common denominator that we had before earnings reports that were positive, lots of stock, John Deere, generated a high closed doji when the relative strength was improving and the volume trend was moving up. And then earnings came up and it was positive, right? So that's a different picture, John Deere. Chipotle Mexican Grill, that was a surprise. That was such a surprise, I think many people got just... I mean, it, it berated everybody. Look at the relative strength was improving. The volume was improving. And again, Chipotle Mexican Grill, you can see the volume patterns, right? Positive. The relative strength is above the zero line. It's improving. And it had a daily high closed doji formed the day before, and then earnings came out. So the common denominator is before earnings, we've seen multiple times that when the positive leading into earnings 
when there's positive volume and positive relative strength, we've seen a successful rate of outperformance in, in earnings in the stock reaction. And that's how I've been playing the market using these indicators, gang. Um, you know, as an example, KORS, Coors, Coors had a bad day today. Um, you know, look at this situation. We talked about this in the room uh, with our community. Uh, the stock was up. I go, I don't know how much is built in. A lot of people may have thought that because of Ralph Lauren was doing so great, Coors would do well too. But here's Coors with a rally, Michael Coors, rally, and the relative strength is weakened, and it had bad results. Um, the volume was kind of improving, but the momentum, these green histogram bars, were not doing great. Here's what I'm, as you can see, right? Those histogram bars were just iffy. It didn't have the warm and fuzzy feeling that this thing's going to launch and take off. No high closed doji before earnings as well. You could see that. So we can kind of look at things. And then there was, uh, what was that, Chico's, which just same kind of concept, gang. It's exactly what we covered yesterday uh, before uh, today's earnings uh, came out. Gang, we got a double top in the market. The relative strength is divergent. And we have the volume indicator divergent. So I don't know if you, you know if you could say, "Gee, this will give me a better chance at success." I'm not saying every single one's a winner, but boy, can you, I mean that you can see whether this is so powerful that it's giving us a better leading edge in the marketplace. So what we have created and how we use the two are very helpful. And it's just it's night and day. This is absolutely by by far the pinnacle of my career if used properly. End of story. And I think it gives everyone more than a fighting edge. It gives everyone a chance to really um, get better understanding of the markets and, and say, hey, what's the quality of that setup? So when we do these presentations, I like to definitely tell people, hey, you know, when you get a trade, it doesn't mean an algo optimizer just means go let it have it. It's an ATM machine. You still got to do a little homework. It's going to execute a trade that you would want to do anyway, but you just you know weren't fast enough on on the on the um, mouse. So if I'm bullish in the market and I see a bullish condition, I would wait for a buy signal and I'd enter it. Right. Well, if you're bullish, then turn on a buy signal. Right. So turn on the system to go long on a buy signal and only take longs. And then when it does, you're in. And then you have the um, ability to have it, have it already been optimized to take your profits and set your stops. Or one of the things that we can do is really cool, you can simply trade it with a confirmation button. What I mean by that is if you go over and look at the, 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 the situation, if you go over to format strategies um, and I go to automate, execute with a count on, if a new trade pops up, a little box, I have it now live. A box will pop up and say, do you wish to do this trade? I can simply look at this trade and say, gee, do I like the condition of the market? Sure. Enter yes. And then boom, it'll fire off the trade for you. Um, so you can do it with auto execution. I can turn that on or I can just say, no, just go ahead and do the trade because I'm setting it up. I set it up for longs only and I'm here watching it. So you can do it multiple ways by auto trading while you're watching it because you set it up. B, use it with extra confirmation, or C, just set it up so an alert will go up, and you can say, gee, I don't want to trade it here. I want to take uh, maybe an ETN, or I want to trade an ETF instead, or I want to trade it at another brokerage firm, or, hey, thanks for the idea that we've got a buy signal in Apple. Maybe I'll just go long a call option. I'll use the signal to go long a call option. That's the key thing. By the way, this is a simple 60-minute system on Apple. Um, again, this one is a 60 minute, not a daily. And here's your performance graph. This is a little bit different than the earlier version I shared with you. Uh, the one I showed you on Apple is this one, which is the daily. This is a daily, and this one is a 60 minute system. 60 minutes, see, 60 minutes. So yeah, I util really utilize this for multiple ways of trading the market that gives me an unfounded edge. And I, I think that the reason we wanted to do the two-part uh, process was to give you a chance to take a look, see what we're doing. This Algo Optimizer program, it's literally taken eight and a half years in the making. We've uh, been doing some upgrades to it and adding phenomenal features. And uh, like I said, you've just seen where we've, we're able to optimize whether it's an individual stock, an ETF. An ETN is an exchange-traded note. And that's what the VXX really is, an exchange-traded note. 
USO, crude oil, ETF, is not an ETF, it's an ETN. It just no trades off of the futures. And, of course, futures like we just saw with the euro currency. So we have control to optimize and run what we call management, um, not maintaining, maintenance. You can go back and say, hey, when volatility changes, this isn't a trading system per se, it's a strategy, and all I'm doing is, is just using the computer to optimize to find out what the best risk-reward ratios are what the best trailing stop function is. Find out what the best trading time is. You know, when should I get in? When should I get out? What's the average holding period? That's what this is, that's what this has been about. So I know a lot of systems out there, people rent signals from other traders, you know, and, and they can run anywhere from a monthly fee of eighty nine to three hundred and fifty dollars. And it controls your position size. You're leasing signals for a hundred dollars a month or two hundred dollars a month, right? And you can only trade one or two contracts of that one market. This is a, a, these black boxes, they don't allow you to optimize or change for your own trade times and style. So, you know, this particular product allows you to custom tailor the time sessions you want to trade. It allows you to trade auto or manually. It allows you the quantity you want to trade, whether it's a two lot, a five lot, a ten lot, trade multiple markets, any market you want to trade. You could trade long or short only, or you could take both longs and short. That's the function of this. That con I wanted to give you a great presentation today. I really put a lot into not only building this and creating this and allowing the general public to have access to them. Um, of course, there's a, a couple caveats. It, it's uh, it's people. It's not available on every platform. It's only available through TradeStation. We have a, a wonderful arrangement with them that they'll give people commission rebates, which is very powerful. And I want everyone to know if you're interested in mission rebates, which is very powerful. And I want everyone to know if you're interested in using the computer, if you think that we're going to become more advanced in our trading uh, style and environment with the age of computer trading, believe me, we are. And we're going to have to constantly maintain, that's the key word, maintain our systems and strategies. And that's what this allows you to do, give you, the individual trader, a beyond successful edge in the market. If you're interested in learning more about this, simply go to our website at Persons Planet, um, and, or you can go to PersonsPlanet.com. In fact, I'll, I'll take you there right now, and um, we'll get you a, uh, a quick tutorial where you can learn more about this. Simply go to Indicators, Algo Optimizer, and you can read more about this. You can simply go over and give us a call at the office. Or you can email us, info at PersonsPlanet.com. I want everyone to have a wonderful end of uh, month, May, which it was started off yesterday looking a little uh, unpleasant. Um, but man, I'll tell you something, gang. This is exciting times to trade, and they are exciting times. And um, we're doing some wonderful things here. I hope uh, you become a part and join us in this journey. This is fantastic and way to trade the markets and all the markets that you're trading. I look forward to the next time we meet. I look forward to seeing you become one of our clients and, and, and students. If you're interested, obviously, give us a jingle or send us an email, info at personsplanet.com. Everyone have a great day.